Today we are covering chapters 12 through 14 in Romeo and Julio. Chapter 12 is another chapter with a group chat where there's multiple people talking. So instead of me reading the different parts, I'm going to explain to you what happens in chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 12. So chapter 12 is the group chat. Julio tells the chat room, like all the people in the chat room, um, that he's been dreaming of, of Afro Queen, aka Romeo. At this point, Julio and Romeo don't know. Um, you know who each other are in person yet. They've only been talking online under their screen names. So Romeo is Afro Queen and Julio is Spanish lover. So he says that he's been dreaming of Afro Queen. Um, Romeo and Julio, they go to a private chat room. Once they talk in their own chat room, um, they realize they go, they go to the same school. They have some stuff in common. Julio says he's lonely because remember he just moved here from a different city. He doesn't like it there. Uh, Romeo agrees to meet him at first lunch the next day at school and then the, the chapter 12 ends. And then right now we're going to read chapters 13 and 14. So chapter 13, Romeo's journal. <clears throat> so they were all wrong. He wasn't a psychopath or a pervert. He was just a dude, a really good looking one, wow, who needed somebody to be a friend. Today I had lunch with Julio. Destiny and I have the same lunch bell, so we usually see each other at lunch. But she was absent today with a cold, so I headed to the lunchroom alone. I just wasn't prepared for what happened. When I first saw him, I sucked in my breath and forgot to exhale. He looks so much better than any of the boys around here. He has really dreamy eyes, but of course, who notices such things? I've never really paid attention to what boys look like, but Julio was different. He was funny and friendly and so easy to talk to and so easy to look at. He was standing there up on top of the table, dressed in a jeans jacket and a Texas Rangers t-shirt, holding a bottle of hot sauce in one hand and a red rose in the other. He seemed to know exactly who I was because he jumped off the table just as I approached and bowed low and handed me the rose. He said he brought the rose because the hot sauce was too great a treasure and he couldn't give it up. We talked about school, he hates it, at least here, cold weather, he hates it, snow, he hates it, and Texas, he loves it. We hit it off so good. We talked so much and laughed so hard that we forgot to eat lunch. The bell rang and we both looked up and realized that we hadn't taken one bite out of our food and lunch was already over. We left and promised to meet again for lunch tomorrow. I can't wait to talk to him again. He's not like any guy I ever met. He's witty and wise and oh my goodness, he's cute too. I've got to get my homework done in a hurry. We've got a one-on-one -on -one session scheduled on the computer at nine tonight. I can't believe this. I can't wait. What is happening to me? I gotta call Destiny. Chapter 14, phone call. Just as Romy picked up the phone to call Destiny, it rang. Hey Destiny, Romy greeted her. I was just getting ready to call you. Well, Romy, you know I've been working on my on developing my psychic abilities. With you, it's easy. Something happened today. Tell me. Romy was never really sure if Destiny was just lucky or if she really did have some extrasensory abilities. How did you know? She asked in amazement. When will you learn to appreciate my psychic powers? Destiny replied. Spill it, girl. I met the dude from the internet, Romy began. I had lunch with him, she added, just to agitate Destiny even more. You what? Are you crazy? Where? When? At school. Romy was enjoying this, making Destiny crazy with questions. You met a grown man at school? Have you lost your mind? I thought you were psychic, teased Romy. I am, but you're messing up the interstellar vibes. He's no grown man. He's the same age as we are. A 16-year-old is a sexual stalker? Destiny was totally confused. Romy laughed out loud. I keep telling you, he's not a stalker or a pervert. He's the new kid, the one who transferred here from Texas a few weeks ago. The one who dyed Ben's nose to match his hair? Yeah, that's the one, and he didn't mean to hit Ben. He's the one you've been talking to? Yeah, and all the time he was going to school right here. Talk about psychic, Destiny said in admiration. You got the stars with you, girl. This is too freaky. What's his sign? I don't know. I didn't ask. Destiny screamed into the phone. How many times do I have to tell you? That's the first thing you ask. How are you going to know if you're compatible or not? We just talked, Romeo replied, unconcerned. That seemed compatible enough. He's fun to, he's fun to talk to, and Destiny, he is so fine. I hear you, girl, and I have not heard this from you before. He's got to be an Aries or a Sagittarius. Those are the fire signs. Since you are a Leo, you know that's your best bet unless you want to go with your opposite, which is an Aquarius, something I would not advise. Fire and water do not mix, girlfriend. You're nuts, Destiny. He could be an Aquarius. I don't know. How can you have lunch with a dude and not be sure of his sign? I'll find out for you, okay? Relax. All I did was eat lunch with him one day. We didn't make wedding plans. Romy laughed. I sure hope his sign is compatible. This may be your soulmate. Don't get carried away, Destiny, warned Romy. I'm not sure if I believe in all that stuff you do about soulmates. All I know is he's really, 
really, I can't put my finger on it, but he makes me feel special. Uh-oh, the special finger feeling. I sure hope that scientific soulmate system package arrives soon. Looks like we're gonna need it. Maybe not, mused Romy. Girl, I may have to get my cards out for you. You're moving into serious territory awfully quick. You eating with him again tomorrow? I think so, I hope so. Romy could feel herself blushing. Oh no, now she's hoping. I hate that I have to make up that test at lunch tomorrow. Meet me at my locker after school and find out his birthday. For sure, I will, Romy promised. Hey, Destiny, she added. <clears throat> what it is. Do you realize that when we've been talking about incompatibility and stuff, we've only been talking about sun signs? Yeah, so what's your point? He's Hispanic, so? And I'm black, so? Neither one of us noticed. Good, that's the way the world ought to be. Destiny had her own sense of world order. Yeah, you're right, agreed Romy. I'll wait for you after last bell tomorrow. Okay, later, girl. Romy hung up the phone, thinking about what Destiny had said.